You are listening to the Inside Scoop, a podcast about self-improvement and knowledge seeking. Our aim is to explore a diverse range of topics and perform self-checks on whether we are being the best versions of ourselves every week. I'm your host, Mario Serbalis. This is Oscar. Hi, Oscar. Hi there. And let's just jump into it. Let's get started. Um, I was going to ask, because you mentioned the cold showers. I forgot we didn't check in for the past yep. few weeks. How was how has it been going? Yeah, we didn't check in for yeah past couple of weeks maybe. I think it's been about two weeks. I meant to actually as long as I remembered notes down exactly when it was, but it was probably like two weeks ago. Uh, I think it was actually at, at the end of our industrial weeks uh, industrial teams project. So that would have been like two weeks ago, right? Mm. Yeah, uh, a couple so of yeah, weeks ago. Um, that or a week before the end of it. So two or three weeks now. Uh, and yeah, I, I mean, I've been just kind of analyzing that a little bit because um, throughout when I was taking cold showers, it, you know, I, I've mentioned previously, it helped me to analyze how I was, I was feeling in particular days and stuff. Uh, and when we came into the semester, I felt they became harder with each day, basically. And I would push them back till like past midnight because I really don't want to do them anymore. Um, but as you know, as I set out in the beginning, like a few months back, probably, uh, it was supposed to be like an experiment of can I keep this one quite challenging thing going for like forever through like all different emotional swings or phases uh, of life, like um, you know, periods of uh, you know crunch, I guess, hard work, and and then you know less hard work um less responsibility or more responsibilities that stuff like that and i would take this one thing and keep going forever and as i have uh i don't know if i've proven a lot but i i, I, I you know i was very committed to this one thing and until the start of the semester when really a, a lot of responsibility started kicking in uh I, I was managing to do it quite easily and then once the semester started it became harder and then i eventually i stopped and I, and I felt like um, I was actually making uh, working during the, the beginning of the semester much harder and I wasn't as productive because I kept going with the showers where when they weren't really helping me um, because they were kind of just like another thing to do in the day uh, besides work. Um, so previous to the start of the semester, I didn't really have any responsibilities that I had to absolve my myself from. Um, so, you know, cold showers felt like, well, in my analysis, cold showers then felt like just another thing, uh, maybe something that's helping me uh, in some way. Uh, but I was basically like deciding my work, uh, work level, I guess, the amount of effort I put into different things. Um, which was, you know, I, I think at the time I did a little bit of mathematics studying, uh, maybe for like four hours a day. Uh, you know, I did my cold showers and I did a podcast on Fridays and I can't remember really what, what much else I did at the time. So compared to how much, how many hours I've got to put into work for university now, like that was nothing. So yeah, just an analysis of that. So how long did you uh, kept doing that? Like since the very first shower that you had? I would have to go back into my diary and see when, but I, I, I don't remember exactly. Uh, I could, uh, if you want to talk now, I can try to look it up. <laughs> yeah, sure. I remember that it was in summer already. Like, I'm, I'm just trying to get a time scale. Like, is it weeks or even months? Or is it just, you know? It's at least a month. A month? Uh, That's good, least. though. That's a lot. Still, it's like... Must be refreshing, um, stopping the habit. As much as you know, you may feel guilty that you want to continue with it. Just some sort well, of a change what, in in life should still be something refreshing, I guess. Like, oh, I don't have to do it anymore. Yeah, you know, like, haven't you had this thought? Uh, mm, I mean, I think yeah, it was it was, it was uh, it wasn't quite like that. It wasn't exciting to to stop doing them. I think, you know, it was kind of out of necessity. 
because uh, I, I felt like I was maybe going to sleep way too late sometimes uh, and I, I was uh, waking up then you know it was messing up with my sleep schedule and stuff like that um, and it was you know generally taking out a, a lot of time of my of the end of my day where I should be like I don't know you know winding down relaxing from work right um, then I also thought maybe you know have them in the morning but I, I never did that um, for for some reasons that you know we've gone too many tangents to go into those, but yeah, like I can't really find it right now. But yeah, well, as long as uh, I get the point, like it's it's not you know two weeks or a week. It's it's you have you've been having them for a month or more. I think it's a good streak, though. I mean, yeah, it's decent, uh, and as I said, the whole point of it at the beginning was. To see how long I can I can keep going for, and I kind of just kept pushing with it. Um, there was a, also a time where, it, in the beginning, I, I when I did the cold showers, I uh, had like a little playlist of music that I listened to, and actually that helped uh, a lot with getting into that uh, place where I could step in the shower, and the cold shower. Um, so I'd start with with hot, with warm water. Uh, and some, you know, nice music playing. And then I had this one tune, the second song in the playlist. Uh, it was always the same. It was um, Sick of Mode. <laughs> Where, uh, I think it's Travis Scott and whatever. Um, and I always had that because it's got a, I don't know if you, do you know Sick of Mode? It's got this transition. No, probably like don't. The beginning. Okay, you can listen to Sick of Mode after this. You'll know what I mean. But for anyone listening, you, you probably you probably have heard of it. Um, yeah, it's got this really cool transition, uh, and in that transition, I would turn it to cold water, and it was just really nice. Uh, but then I, I I think I went on an internet an internet detox as well, uh, so I didn't have any music anymore. I deleted all the music that I had downloaded on Spotify, as well. Uh, no music, and but I still kept going with it. I know it became harder to do it then, so that's another thing. Uh, but yeah, it's it's as if you had this little routine thing, like music, yeah, I mean, shower, everything. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the the crazy guy on on Joe Rogan that just like runs. A, uh, that wasn't a Joe Rogan experience. He runs like hundred miles and stuff. David Goggins. Uh, David Goggins. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he he talks about this like having music while ro- like running or working out is like cheating or whatever. Because <laughs> I don't, I, guess, I suppose he he to him it makes it easier. Uh, and he's like, you know, what are you gonna do when there is no music? <laughs> like, how, how are you gonna push it? What what's going to motivate? What's going to push you if you have no music? Now, mm. I I have said previously uh, that our, our 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 emotional state isn't uh, entirely isn't like contingent on uh the re- re- what's happening in the real world in the physical world uh but you know it is the it is predicted by it but it's not entirely contingent on it uh so yeah i, I can believe that listening to music can make certain things uh, certain you know physical activities easier or whatever yeah that's good and i think i felt it myself as well so uh, i don't know if you've had any experience with that or I mean, music does help you motivate and, and push yourself and all of that. It's like Mike Tyson when he's like, I'm going to go to the gym because of his uh, his new fight and all of that, right? He's, he's like, going to go to the gym, do... What was he doing? Like treadmill or something? One of these activities. And he just put on a movie and he was thinking of he's going to, you know, do the activity for like half an hour or t- or whatever. And he actually came out after like two hours or, or so because he was watching something. So it took his attention right. away. So he in right. turn has done way more physical activity, which is actually a positive thing, even if it is easier, because that's the mm-hmm. point, the physical activity. And the easier yeah. you can make it for yourself to actually do that, I would go all the way for that. Like, that's that's good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, for... Uh... You know, David Goggins is a whole different case. Uh, he's all about the hang- punishing himself physically and, and and mentally as well. Like he wants to make everything as hard as as he can for himself. I mean, you do trade off 
for example, focus when you're listening to music and that, you know, might not be important for running. Uh, it might be important for uh, other working uh, workouts uh, where you really have to uh, focus on your form and stuff to get it right. Um, like my friend who um, he works at the gym, uh, he's like, I'm not sure exactly what he does, different things there. Uh, but, uh, he, you know, he like a, he's like a trainer too. Uh, so like, like staying fit is, is part of his, uh, part of what he does, uh, I guess for his work. But, um, yeah, I spoke to him and I was like, like, do you, do you listen to music when you work out and that? And he was, or do you get pumped up? And he was like, well, when you do it like every day or whatever, when you do it for like so long, uh, regularly, like the music doesn't it becomes uh the music doesn't really pump you up anymore like you, you just gotta get that motivation intrinsically uh so I think eventually what, i think what he means to say is that he you just like it's not as if you lack motivation to actually exercise you just have the music that helps you out and then you just keep going without it once you have been doing it for so long it's just ingrained in you you just come in and do the the routine. Oh, no, no, I know that's not what he was saying. Uh, I can't, I can't quote him exactly as what he said, but I know that's not what he was saying. What I'm saying is, is that you know, eventually, when it becomes a thing that you just do, the music isn't going to help you anymore, right? The music that, that the music that you've used once to get you pumped up eventually that effect that the music has on you it wears off it doesn't you don't doesn't have that effect anymore it's like when you look at boxers for example and when they use this you looked at mike tyson for example they don't always uh train as intensely as they do before a fight and so they might use the music particularly uh like that, like when he was talking about it there, and he hasn't fought in a long time as well, uh, to pump to pump himself up. But I can imagine that effect wears off over time of how much music can motivate you on its own, and that's that might be what true. I mean when I say, and that's what I mean when I say that your emotional state isn't entirely contingent on uh, the real what's happening in the real world. Uh, because it's relative and you get used to certain things, good things and bad things. Uh, you get used to them over time. Uh, and the effect that music has on you is kind of emotional, I would say, uh, mm. in a sense. Uh, and again, that's just a theory, but I can, you know, from these examples or hypothesis, but from these examples, I can see, you know, again, and, you know, I'm not looking at this empirically, so there might be bias. I, where I'm, you know, trying to prove my hypothesis by looking, you know, cherry picking examples. Um, but it's just been my experience as well, I think, um, that over time, you know, you listen to, to certain music um, and the effect that music has on you wears out and then you move on to other music and eventually you've, you've been like for most of the music that would have that effect on you and you don't know like what other music to look for. And yeah, it makes sense. I just think that it's very like personal for everyone and I don't think I've ever thought of it this way, you know. The first you were the first person to actually introduce this idea that music is actually cheating. I don't, I've never felt Well, I don't necessarily think like that. that. I I don't necessarily think that. Uh, I was just quoting David Goggins saying that. But oh yeah, everyone is is different, obviously. But yeah, what I'm saying there isn't just like just an opinion it's something that i observe very closely uh something that, that i've been analyzing for for years so it's not just an opinion that i have in this moment uh about emotion it's something i've been trying to figure out for a long time so uh, mm. whether there may but maybe bias there it's much more than it's mu it goes much farther than how how is this thing affecting me like in the moment uh and, and stuff like that yeah i see what you mean it's personal again um, sure uh, so just to lead us back on the road back on track this is episode 42 actually and you know what a number 42 
means in like the popular culture or whatever? Well, you have told me it's the meaning of life、wow. from from the book、uh, Hitchhiker, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah, galaxy and a, like universe and everything. What all that?、Um, yeah, that's. <laughs> I mean. So I thought it would be nice to celebrate this by talking about what, like, we think the meaning is, and、uh, what our meaning might be, and just in general, what is the meaning of life? Like, what what does that mean to have a meaning?、Um, and just to lead into that, I think we could talk about the. Th- The diaries that、uh, I think we just talked off the podcast of like how you you kept you, you're diarying like you're writing a diary right now right like a journal whatever. Yep, I haven't written an entry in it for a few weeks now though, so that's just unfortunate. But it's how it's been lately.、Mm, is it? Oh, because because it's because like, did you say you write when it's it's the good times or do you write in it when it's the bad times? Uh, yeah, I mean, I said it's partly influenced by whether it's like good times or bad times, but also、uh, probably just how much work I have going on,、uh, and I have a lot of work going on right now. So to sit down at the end of the day and, and write something, it's like, oh yeah, when I've got access to like quick enter, you know, entertainment like Facebook and, and shit,、um, it's so much easier to just open my, up my phone and, and scroll than sit down, connect with my thoughts, and You know, write something meaningful down, or reflect on the day. Uh, uh,、mm. It's much easier to just open Facebook and just scroll because it's so mindless and so easy.、Uh, yeah. So I haven't really written down a lot, and、uh, when I was in more of an、uh, an emotionally stable state, and also didn't have so many responsibilities over the summer, I, I wrote down a lot more in my diary.、Um, It's almost you can you could you could say it's almost work, but like for me personally, it's、um, it kind of it kind of is. You know, I'm interested in、uh, you know psychological analysis through diaries,、uh, something I want to、uh, do do more of and and learn about and、uh, use to learn about myself and and this kind of、um, psychology research approach, you know, into oneself.、Uh, So that's kind of my motivation for making diaries,、uh, not necessarily just for the sake of、uh, getting back and and you know seeing, you know, trying to fix up my emotional state or whatever, by seeing that oh I've actually you know whatever done a lot in in the past month or something like that. It's more for in general just、uh, making an analysis and empir- almost an empirical analysis because I think because my diaries aren't structured, I can really like. Get the gist of what was going on with me at the time、uh, when I look back. Yeah. So it's、uh, less of like biased data, which is you know you're only writing when you're feeling sad, or you're only writing when you're very happy, or whatever. You feel like you're you've been consistent well, with that.、It. Would be well, that would be the attempt, but I went you know a, a level higher above that、uh, to. Derive that w- when the times are bad, perhaps I don't write as much, and I know this is something you wanted to、uh, pull attention on. So, yeah, I see.、Um, yeah, I thought diaries,、uh, as much as everyone keeps、uh, having this vision of you know a person sitting down with a pen and paper and writing everything down. I don't know if if this helps me personally the most, so I was like, I should probably look for different ways of、uh, doing the same thing, you know.、Uh, and I had to come up with、uh, with the like vlogging kind of idea again, you know. I I was doing it like years ago, and、uh, I think my cre- you know creative powers or whatever is slowly coming back. I'm just like getting out of this rut. Hopefully, you know, with like the creative creativeness and everything.、Um, do you have any ideas on like how would I structure like YouTube content, for example, to、uh, document the thoughts? 
be daily or or bi-weekly or like every few days or something you know like um it, as as in like making this public is also a challenge because you can't just have uh some some very very personal things you want to you know share and so i guess yeah. that, that's the the current like idea yeah, that I mean, i'm trying to ponder i guess you can like keep your life to things that you would want to share <laughs> uh like on this podcast i share like almost every everything about my life mm -hmm. you know i i won't share things about like relationships with people or whatever um relations and relationships with people because that's you know that's beyond personal that affects other people as well um but like about you know i'll talk about my emotional state and then then things on here so i mean if you're comfortable talking about that i think that can be very useful as well for looking back and and just you know see that means that in, for me it's just looking back and seeing for me it's not like looking back and thinking you know trying to be like oh look at me like you know i can see that i've grown you know, I, I don't need that for me. It literally is just, you know, for the analysis. Um, but, you know, whatever it is for you, you know, do it do it for whatever pur purpose it would serve for you, you know. Find the purpose first. If, um, mm. find, figure out if you really want to do it. Yeah, like find, find the why. I think you mentioned a good... Uh... Uh, I'll just note it down. Find the why. Um, I think you mentioned a good good thing about sharing relationships with people, right? Like sharing that. Yeah, I think when I meant when I when I was saying that uh, I don't want to, you know, share everything. That is probably the main the main thing that I was thinking. Like, what should I keep, you know, to myself? And I think you're right. It's probably there's nothing too much personal that I could like hide i don't have to like hide anything i don't have anything to hide right and uh mostly it's just uh yeah it's just to not i don't know endanger or involve other people so yeah i think i could get away with just like sharing stuff without you know sharing friendship opinions of of like relationships with other people yeah so leaving that out is actually a good idea yeah yeah, I, th I think I'll just have a a bit of a thought on like what what to actually include, how to structure it, and then just uh, maybe share like daily thoughts or maybe less frequent, but just like thoughts. And then maybe looking back at it, you know, I could see how many new ideas I come up with. Because uh, I need, I think I need to prove to myself that I I am capable of coming up with new ideas. Because now I just keep looking around and thinking that you know i just don't have any more new ideas you know it's like mm. <laughs> although I, I feel like everyone is capable of that and yeah i mean you can be an idea machine if you want to uh it just takes i mean it takes a few things probably it takes practice yeah uh, it takes you know the input of knowledge uh I don't know where creative thinking in general would come from, uh, but you know, if you really want something, you're going to figure out some creative ideas. Uh, you know, if you put, just put the challenge in front of yourself and think about it long enough, of you know, I want to do this. How am I going to do it? And you know, it's it's like an almost impossible task. You're eventually going to you know, you're going to come up with so many ideas that are going you're not are not going to get you there, but are going to get you somewhere else. Uh, which can also be interesting. Yeah. Um, although thinking about this this current state of mind, right? Like it it's weird how. I think we've talked about this already. When I feel like my best potential is when I am busy with a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm just proving to myself time and time again that when I don't have something to do, I just feel. I don't know if that like empty word actually fits here, but just I just don't feel like myself. I don't feel like I'm performing. I don't feel like I'm fulfilling my purpose and duties and all of that. You know. Well, I can uh, I can reflect upon this last Friday. I had uh, you know like a fair weeks of work, uh, you know not full days of work to catch up on for a module. 
mm-hmm. for university for a quiz that I had to do, a little test, class test quiz I had to do on Friday. Uh, and I don't know, you know, was, the deadline's like midnight and it takes like, you get like two hours to do it. So I started like at 10 p.m. to get the most time. But I was, you know, spending the whole day um, studying for that. And I was working very hard. I fasted the whole day, basically. Um, you know, from morning, well, from the night before I, you know, I didn't eat when I slept. Morning, till like ten, uh, I just fasted and um, and I just just worked. There was no distractions. It was just my my eyes just on this, my mind on this, mm-hmm. and I uh, just working very hard, and like focusing so much, like what should have been a week's energy into one day. Uh, this is kind of like when I want to talk about the emotional swings, uh, but focusing like all of that energy on one day because I have to do this thing is is where a lot of uh, many ideas, unrelated ideas to what I was doing at the time came, came to my mind because my um, my mind was just going at such a very high pace to take in all this content for to, to, to study for the quiz and, and process it and understand it. At the same time, as a pipe byproduct, a lot of ideas of other things that I usually think about, um, you know, came to my mind. And 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 what I do is, I I didn't at the time. I didn't have any. Um, what I do basically is I have my uh, little notebook and I write my notes in that for study from studying because they say I um, still don't know. It's supposed to help you to um, write things down physically uh to to remember things i'm not sure about well there's 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 some you know studies about that's supposed to help but uh gray area anyway so i've got i, I sometimes use different like colors um so in the middle of writing notes for whatever i'm working on at the time i will use a different color if i have a thought that comes to my mind and i just want to jot it down i don't have to grab my phone i don't have to find another another place to write you know i just write it right in the middle of that work just in a different color and so when I'm in, in a state like this, when I have to like re- work really hard for, you know, all this focus of maybe a week into one day, um, a lot of other ideas are interspersed in working on this main thing. And so I do just write them down and they're, they're usually my, like my best, best ideas too. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's like an idea machine. Yeah, but do you feel like you're you're more of an idea guy when you're working on a single huge task that needs to be accomplished or when you're spreading yourself across many different things that happen throughout the day and you have to accomplish that? I would say a single thing. or It's, it's actually weird because my ideas are often, um, especially during the semester, they're about the psycho- psychology of learning and 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 then well it's generally psychology <laughs> and about how we think about how i think like introspection and stuff so while i'm trying to work i will make observations of uh how i wrote something one observation i make made for example is I, I i joined i was writing two words and because the start of the second word uh the, st- the first couple of words of it were the same as the last couple of words of the of the last word the last couple of words of the last word you could write them as one word i don't i can't remember what they were exactly because uh, it's hard to explain like that um something the was the second word so t h e was the second word and the last word ended with t h so instead of writing the last word and and then the next word the i just joined them together because the the letters were the same where they connected and that's the kind of thing where I was working at this kind of, um, at this many, this RPM in my mind, uh, that I would make an observation of that. And I had to note it down as a, as a, a kind of a, a psychological phenomenon that I, that I found quite interesting. And, um, you know, in other states I would just ignore that, or I wouldn't even make that observation because, uh, my mind wasn't like at the work, working at this kind of level. Uh, mm. I mean, that's a terrible example because I can't remember what the words were. It would make so much more sense if I knew, uh, if I remembered. But yeah. Yeah. So this is deep work for you. Just getting deep into work. something. Yeah. And, and, but when I'm doing many things at once, on the other hand, 
uh, my mind is like uh, making a, a psychological analysis of how is this different to working on one thing, for example. Uh, you know what? What am I? What am I like? What are the? Um, am I? Am I making more progress on uh, less progress on each individual thing that would I would make, for example, on this one thing? Uh, and so you know, I would make observations on, on on that if I'm in a particular state where I'm working really hard as well. Um, so it depends, really. I mean, I'm going on a rant right now, but <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I was trying to just make a case analysis of that of that Friday. Uh, not to go into anything else but yeah i had so many ideas just coming out of nowhere so and yeah how i wanted to tie that to emotional swings is like you know i could be slacking off the entire week or think i'm slacking off uh or perhaps i'm doing some work that i'm not used to and it's, and it's just taking me a long time and then you know this friday i've got to get this work done no matter what because i've got to prepare for this test because you know my degree classification is contingent on like every single thing that i do mm. um or every single little uh part of the module grade um so yeah um or not contingent it's uh predicted but yeah predictable predicted i am going uh so so tired now <laughs> i'm so tired wow. i don't even know what i'm talking about anymore that's weird, I guess. <laughs> just, uh, I just well, keep talking, you know, it's, it's good. <laughs> like the more ideas you have, the, if you're right, if your mind is racing and then you just want to put them all out there, it's good stuff. Nah. Maybe that's what I mean with like journaling and, and diaries and having a quick, cause that's my easiest way. It's just to sit down and maybe record a video, you know, even if it's like two minutes or a minute. But it, why, why does it sometimes feel so hard to find motivation to actually sit down? And then once I sit down and do it, I just feel like the most, I feel a bit, I feel very good. It's like, you know, the, uh, how do I like, I fulfill my mm -hmm. purpose, my meaning. I just don't know. It's different. It's sharing. It's like, obviously, you know sharing yeah. it with someone or just documenting my own thoughts on film is uh somehow giving me fulfillment i don't yeah. know what that is why that is but well i i, I um it's very interesting um because you said you know when you when you finally sit down to do it it's like uh it's kind of like this with this wall this barrier right of uh you know the effort that it takes to go and sit down and do this but once you push through it and you do and you start doing it it's like this you get this really nice feeling right yeah but the thing is how dumb can i be to actually realize that yo on the other on the other side of this there's good things it's the same as eating healthy and feeling good afterwards it's the same as yeah. actually waking up early in the morning and accomplishing everything and then thinking holy i have done so much work this day like it, i'm i'm so yeah. happy but then pushing yourself over that little hill of yeah having to put extra effort to like but that's part of it wake though. up early that, you know that's part of it like the state that you get yourself in until you actually want to push through that wall is what make the, the contrast between the two states is kind of what makes being on the other side of it kind of like so noticeable so significant if you get what I mean. Yeah. Like, I think so eventually the, the one will lead the other and then the other will fulfill the, the first one. You know, it's like if you, uh, if you keep constantly doing that, which is if you keep constantly creating or whatever it is, insert, you know, something that is a bit difficult to do, but fulfills you or gives you great returns. Uh, and then you keep seeing the, the the benefits of it, then probably you're just gonna keep doing it until it becomes a habit, and well, it's gonna, yeah, gonna become easier to do. You will keep doing it, um, and it will feel good for a long time if you if you break through that wall, and then you keep keep doing it. But eventually, as I as we spoke before, I mean, what eventually really happens is like with New Year's resolutions, you know, people do them for like two weeks or a month, you know, working out or whatever, and it feels good, it feels great. Eventually. 
you know, it goes away. It's not like it's because it's it's not necessity for a living, and it's also not your career. You know, you're not a sportsman. It's totally natural for people to grow basically bored of it or forget. You know why they started doing it and 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 we spoke about this before and then they stop and so it's a cycle thing it's it cycles and unless it's your it's basically your job as a sports you know if you're a sports person eventually you know it will come and go in phases uh you know unless like your identity is based on it right for people who you know bodybuilders or whatever the ones who keep doing it for you know their entire lives it's it's kind of like because it's their identity that's also important to know yeah it becomes you you become it it's one beautiful unity um (laughs) so i want to share this quote by supposedly mark twain yeah but it might have actually been invented and popularized by self-help books so it's a huge disclaimer because you know they say it's as if mark twain would say that but it's Anyway, it's like a pop culture spinoff on that. So the quote goes, Mm. uh, the two most important days of your life are the day when you were born and the day when you found out why. So the day you were born and the day you find out why you were born pretty much. So it's, uh, Mm. you know, it's one of those like motivational ones. But then I think by claiming that you could say that there is a purpose for everyone, right? Someone, well, everyone is born to do something out here. Like everyone has some sort of a meaning to their life. Um, And I think I had a bit of also like a perspective change once uh, I was browsing like YouTube, uh, either watching some video, right? And uh, read this in, in the YouTube comments somewhere some because it was i feel like one of the philosopher videos on like how we should conceptualize the meaning of life and all that and the guy just said oh now i now i know what you mean because it's like this guy who i know who's an, an old man and he just keeps going outside and shoveling snow when you know when it just snows he just all he does is just goes out and like shovels the snow everywhere it's like because that that brings meaning to to the guy's life, you know. It 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 just yeah. that's your meaning, that's your purpose, your dharma, maybe even to you know something that you do, and it might be so mundane and so simple, trivial, boring, but it might be the thing that you're supposed to do to contribute towards this whole oneness of of being and yeah i was thinking we should cut ourselves some slack too and just do what we are we are in uh, instinctually or instinctively what's the the actual word here like what you feel like doing sometimes yeah i mean i don't i don't i don't know it seems you always talk about cutting slack but (laughs) I think the, the, the whole yin and yang, I'm always like, I'm sometimes or often on the podcast, I'm like, we got to push ourselves and shit. And then I'm like, it doesn't really matter. And then I feel like you're always like the other side where we should cut ourselves some slack or, you know. Yeah, because even, cause even with the music, right, you, you, you're going to force yourself to, or like force someone else to not listen to music while exercising or something. Sure. Well, I'm not. I'm, yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. Like. Yeah. Well, do you <laughs> yeah because it's it's not as if you you claim that and you force everyone to do that it's just an idea that you're thinking about and just no i literally said like twice that this was I just i was just quoting uh david coggins <laughs> yeah but you wouldn't be quoting it if uh you wouldn't agree that's with not that true idea. i just think it's a I don't. I don't have to agree of it. I, I. I. accept that as his experience. I don't know how I feel about it. Okay. All right. Glad we cleared that up. <laughs> well, that's what I meant by saying that I understand what you mean, but uh, it's hard to express the thoughts in, in like a clear manner, especially when it's been like forty-five minutes of me holding this goddamn heavy microphone in one arm. <laughs> like it's in one hand, like my microphone workout. Yeah, it's a it's a workout. My microphone arm broke 
kind of. I just had like to order a new one. It's so simple, right? It seems like it's it's a goddamn metal piece of uh, machinery that, or like a thing that just holds your microphone up, mm. suspended above the ground. But if that thing is not there, it and it's not fulfilling its purpose, then the whole chain breaks and the things that depend on it aren't able to fulfill their purpose because that thing is just not there you know so and it's so simple it's like i wanted to stream but for for me to stream i need audio for me to do audio i need to have a microphone and i do have a microphone but the microphone is not able to fulfill its purpose because there's nothing that holds it up you know it's like <laughs> It's sometimes like uh, weirdly, everything just leads back to the meaning and purpose thoughts. Um, in the end, it's all irrelevant anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> the nihilist outlook. Ain't that true, though? Well, I mean, it's uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's I mean, it's just true. Uh, not a lot to say about it. <laughs> Thanks, Jar. Yeah, it's uh, it's a weird. I mean, we, we we make an effort to an analyze it still, uh, and and to be emotional about it, even if it doesn't matter. But <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. So, do you know what your dharma is, your purpose, your meaning, your uh, contribution to humanity? <laughs> I guess. Uh, um just to, to just simply put it out there i don't think i know mine so it's uh, just a question like maybe you thought about this more than i did so i mean i i, I think so uh revolutionized psychology maybe uh i mean like if you're gonna think about your purpose you gotta you gotta think big like, mm. otherwise you might as well not think about it, I think, for me at least. Listen, that yeah, microphone stand does not need to uh, actually <laughs> save the world. The microphone stand just needs to play his part because then the microphone will be suspended. I will sit down. I will turn it on. I will speak into it. Maybe the words will get carried in the format of ones and zeros across the web. Maybe someone else on the other end will tune in, hear some idea, get inspired, whatever, you know? It's it's the whole yeah. grand scheme of things. The microphone stand itself does not need to go out there and entertain people, you know. I just uh yeah. <laughs> I think thinking big is good. But then you can also think about the community and uh how much it can accomplish by the um, power of like everyone working together instead of Yeah, I mean, uh, that's uh definitely important. Uh, but when it comes to your meaning, I think to each their own. And sure, you're gonna ask me about my meaning. Uh, you know, it's it's my contributions to science. So, so you're you're yeah. leaning more towards uh, psychology. Um, well, psychology, and you know, uh, together with um, artificial intelligence, uh, and they're, they're kind of influencing each other. They're uh, inter intertwined, uh, in 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 the way I, I I look at the world. So, yeah, kind That's of nice. um, so, you know, artificial intelligence, uh, deep learning, um, neural networks, models, kind of um, the the little bit of idea at the moment that I have of 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 them, uh, kind of influences um, how I think about. Uh, the human mind and the other way around as well uh, yeah but that's, that's good you know, like, the way I yeah that's cool because see when I was asking this I didn't even expect you to to answer it I was like oh. <laughs> so I actually surprised that you not to say that in like uh, any any way to like I don't know, I say like that if I would uh, think that you're incapable of finding your own meaning, but just, just in general, I was like pleasantly surprised that you actually feel like you know your purpose. And it's um, it's it's good. 
I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's not like uh, comforting, right? To in in a sense that, I mean, I guess it's nice to know where I'm going or where I want to go. Um, as you know, eventually we all have to um, dedicate. Uh, if, if you know, find find what we want to do. For, well, you know, a very simple quote being without a goal, you can't score, right? Simple right. as that. Uh, you know, and eventually we have to pick something that we want to do for, for our, for the rest of our, you know, careers, lives, whatever. And, um, you know, you have to specialize eventually in the modern world if you want to stay afloat. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, you could, you could do menial labor, but uh, let's not go on this tangent. Um, as I was saying, it's not necessarily comforting. It's nice, but it's not necessarily comforting to the point where, you know, I don't have any worries because I I do and I have, you know, emotional swings now. I'm in a phase like that. Um, so it isn't, it, it's not comforting to the point where I, I don't care anymore. And, you know, before the semester started, I was all like, oh, I don't, I don't care anymore. Um, but now I've put these responsibilities in front of myself and I have something to care about once more, right? about uh you know i don't want to to fail um and these things in these pursuits that i've picked up right now so mm -hmm. yeah uh, i've picked up some emotional um anchors or yeah i don't know what to call them but yeah and nice. so i you know i have some care again <laughs> it's damn nice dude yeah i just keep thinking back about that dude shoveling snow and uh <laughs> yeah i remember shoveling snow in minecraft after like that <laughs> lol <laughs> um no i was just building like a house out there and it literally just started snowing and it before the house roof was finished it, it was all s snowed inside and i was like ah, damn it i'm gonna have to like go around and individually click on every single tile of snow digital representation of snow in some sort of a weird you know game and and i was like well what am i doing but then you know it accomplishes some sort of a task a thing like even if it's virtually shoveling snow or if it's actually shoveling snow or if it's uh talking to someone i don't know man these discussions right. are are, are hard to have but like or even even just thinking about the meaning is is hard but well what is uh what is what is yours do you have something what my meaning is yeah your yeah hmm. meaning no i don't know man i just feel like i'm tr i'm always trying to go and like figure it out and then i keep saying that i want to go and make videos and share ideas you know yeah that like I feel fulfilled after I create something mm -hmm. and I keep thinking back to the TEDx talk and how I also said like oh I think I found my passion because I literally went on on record saying I found my passion and it's video creation and it was already yeah. like three or so years ago and I don't know if that is haunting me or if that's just an extra extra thing that pushes or if that's actually one of those situations where you know they say you have to just go with something stick with it and that becomes your passion you know you don't just become passionate yeah. about something and make it your job it's like yeah uh, yeah it's the, yeah. the, the former mm -hmm. uh, i mean there's a, uh, there was a talk from cal newport that i shared with you about that and i think you should really listen to it. i think it's really good um I think just to draw a parallel uh, of something I've had, like you've had the experience four years ago, harboring on you of, you know, you said this was your passion and I don't know, you feel like you're not living up to it, I guess. Um, you know, I had the thing um, probably some four years ago or even five in high school still. I, I was playing a little, a little bit of CSGO and I realized people making, you know, people had these websites of uh, CSGO, uh, you know, where you could like... Uh, open CSGO uh, cases and buy skin, yeah, win skins and stuff. We're making, we're making a shit ton of money off that. Uh, I was like, how hard can it be, right? 
to put together a website like that. <laughs> mm. uh, especially, and I ended up doing uh, trying to do that for my project in high school for advanced higher computing, and it turned out really shit. <laughs> I, it didn't it didn't go to market if you like. Uh, it got me a B in in high school, but yeah, uh, and for years after that, and every year there would come a point where I'd be like, you know, I should do this now. I could, sh- I, I can still do it, right? Uh, there's still the 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 opportunity there, and it was a lot of it was contingent. And what why I was keeping it keep thinking about it is because I had a really um, cool name for the website, right? It was see, it, it was a uh, uh, suka case, I think. <laughs> oh my god uh it's not nice though <laughs> well yeah but it's meme memeable yeah uh, not not that memes would be made of it but in the sense that it's kind of like you can joke about it a little bit yeah, yeah. and i thought you know that and it's as easy as you know making friends with some people uh on making right friends with the right people on on csgo and just hope that they're the gambling types uh and just be like, hey guys, I made this uh, new website. You want to check it out or whatever uh, to get your first people interested. Uh, an affiliate program, and and that's it. But I never, and and I never did it. So, mm. uh, and for a long time, that was like um, harboring over me. Yeah, uh, and I was, um, I was being like, you know, I could have totally done that. Am I like this lazy not to do that? Mm. Like, it's not that hard. <laughs> um, you still think you want to do it? Not anymore. I mean, I, I was thinking recently that I I could try and undo it now, um, but it doesn't make me feel uh, bad about myself, like the fact that I d- don't do it, because uh, it was, um, yeah, uh, just uh, a lot of other things that I am doing these days. That that so it's not like my focus. I think at the time actually, what it was was that I wasn't. Uh, perhaps doing much more else that was productive uh, looking forward to maybe like the summer or oh, I'm going to this summer I'm going to do the website and stuff and that's why, why it was making feel, me feel shit then when I didn't do it or whatever uh, it was like oh another summer gone and I didn't even like do a project or whatever uh, yeah but these days I don't really care about it anymore I've got other things that I think about and, and uh, other ways that I, I see uh, e, you know uh, as as other paths that I see to my future, right? Mm. That I would be as happy with, because the idea of that was just to make myself um, financially independent, so I could mm. basically do whatever I wanted, whatever choose whatever path I wanted. But I'm kind of so glad that I actually never uh, put in the effort to to do that, because I feel maybe in the process of putting the effort in, I would have grown. But if I had, if I, if it was just, if I just did it and it just worked and I didn't put a lot of effort into it, but it still worked, I feel like I would have never been, you know, had so many experiences, uh, so many experiences, humbling experiences that I, that I had, uh, throughout, you know, the last four years, uh, if that happened, that would have like really shaped me to be a functional adult, right? Where, you know. I wouldn't have any if I if I just kind of became super, you know, financially independent, like rich at at eighteen or whatever. I don't think, you know, I I would have a, a grip on reality, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah, makes sense. So, but as I you know as I also said in previous many episodes, uh, we always make the situation that we're in now like we can we learn to live with it, so we make excuses for why better than you know, another possibility. Uh, so eventually over time. So it's also that, but you know, I'm fine with it. I just analyze things to that extent because I, I find it fun to do. Mm. So, yeah. Fun. I say fun. I mean, it's, it's more, this is the thing with it's fun. Your purpose, uh, man, to analyze things. Purpose or, or yeah, uh, I say fun, but I don't want to say fun. I think it's misleading. I think it's it's something I feel I need to do rather than it's just fun. I think people say fun a lot, uh, in place of something else, and then they they create this cute image of you know something that isn't really fun is actually work as being fun. So yeah, I don't want to do that. 
I don't want to say it's fun. At times, maybe it's it's fulfilling to uh, make a good analysis, make a good prediction of the real world or whatever in psychology. But um, really, it is work. It's why when I have a lot of work from university, I don't do a lot of thinking about, um, you know, I don't jot down a lot of um, a lot of hy- psychology hypo- hypotheses, right? I don't maybe keep the diary as I should. So it it is work, right? And as Carl Newport, if you watch that talk, talks about it, you know, a passion comes from hard work, right? You 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 work hard, you become really good at something, and and being good at that thing is is the passion, basically. Um, you can imagine if you work uh, as a programmer, the work that you do at work, literally, for somebody else, let's say, is real work. You have to figure out a good way of uh, doing things. Not everybody does. People slack off. But, you know, if you're working for Google or whatever, you know, what you're doing there is real work. Now, if you go back home after that and you program a mod for Minecraft for fun, for example, uh, it's kind of like the work that you did, the real work that you did prepared you to use uh, as a programmer to be able to use your programming skills to fuel your hobby. Uh, mm. Because what you're doing then really is not learning necessarily anything new, because that's work. Learning new things is work. It's always work. But utilizing what you've already learned, you know, isn't so much work, and it can be enjoyable actually. So, yeah, and you know that can become a hobby. But you know, don't get fooled into thinking that when you're doing something for fun, uh, that you're necessarily learning a lot. Mm. You might yeah. there, there might be different phases where you are, but uh, like m- the hardest thing, the, the most learning you you learn the most in the hardest times, in the toughest times, basically, uh, and and when the the times are good, the good times come because you've learned things that put you maybe a little bit ahead or um, allow you to feel productive again or whatever, right? Uh, but that's just one model of looking at it. There could be different models. Uh, that that's another thing to explore. But yeah. Yeah. But um, so from this comes uh, you. You learn certain things on on work on job or or like just whatever you learn once. You don't have to kind of learn it again, right? To do it. Yeah. Maybe that doesn't benefit you as much if you perform something. It's like. Even making websites, right? You learn how to make a website. And then there's just so many websites that you can make for yourself. But maybe, yeah. there, maybe there's a friend or someone else who's like, yo, I know it's it's not that difficult for you and all that. You know, like, it's a simple idea. Could you help me out? And you help the person. And it's just like, you're utilizing, again, I think coming back to the purpose idea. It's your purpose to, like, serve that interaction, like, help that person or use your knowledge Perhaps, yeah. somehow so yeah interesting i mean learning something yeah i like the idea what you said like learning it on on like for your actual job job like the conventional idea of exchanging your expertise for money and then doing yeah. something for yourself or by using that expertise you know time yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah I feel like I don't know how to monetize mine. I'm slowly um, learning it, time? you know. It's like just the the ideas and the, the the expertise in certain fields that I have, for example. I mean, I have been using the technical knowledge of sound engineering and uh, video creation, live streaming. Slowly beginning to like getting get, a, get uh, more money from that, but uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just kind of tough for me to come up and and actually make a business idea a reality you know it's like it would be kind of cool to try it out try out like make a business or even a freelance thing where i could be offering services for for you know pay uh but it's just something that i don't have either confidence or something in you know Mm. There's some people who are just feels like they're naturally good at it. 
just making deals, finding ideas, capturing clients, you know, signing agreements, getting money. But yeah. Yeah, I guess there's probably a lot of hard work behind that too. So. Yeah, possibly. I'm sure. A lot of experience. So it's just going to come with time, I guess. Well, I want to say hopefully, but at the same time, I, I feel like I. it's not hopefully. It's more of like possibly, you know, and uh, you just got to keep trying and uh, maybe eventually. <laughs> maybe that's the purpose, you know, to figure figure stuff out. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, we we, we spoke about it uh, before also. We spoke about so many things. I mean, I could just listen back to this podcast uh, a couple of years from now just to know what I was, what I was everything I was thinking about at the mm, time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, we spoke about this too. Um, I, I don't, shouldn't have went on that tangent because I can't remember what I was going to say now. <laughs> uh, shit. <laughs> well well yeah there you go well <laughs> maybe that's that's uh how it was meant to be right because <laughs> uh, sure. yeah. it's it's been our hour uh meaning yeah. of life special there i you if you have something else to to put out there about our meaning of lives and all oh, that uh, <laughs> i'm exhausted so <laughs> It's probably good. It's good. It means you're working towards something. On something. I mean, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I think it'll be interesting to put out that my entire day has been pretty unproductive uh, until you now this podcast. So, yeah. <laughs> well, now you can go out there and, you know, make your your new AI thing with the new thoughts integrated into it. <laughs> and, um,. Yeah, that's very funny. <laughs> um, yeah, it, you, you could say this is bordering on a manic episode. So, yeah, that's also interesting. But I've been able to um, almost straddle the wave and, and kind of extract something from it, not going completely crazy. Uh, so I think there's there's some valuable things in here. Um, so that's good. Yeah, I feel like there's, you can see and find positives in everything pretty much. Well, that uh, yeah. was us then. Around an hour. Episode 42. Meaning of Life special. Uh, thank you for a lengthy, lengthy conversation, Oscar. Thank you as well. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And we'll see you next week. See you. <laughs>